Many years ago, when my daughter was potty training, a friend recommended I keep a travel potty with me. It saved me from rushing to find a restroom and avoiding stopping in anywhere questionable with a toddler. We would drive about 40 minutes to pick up my husband on his lunch break. That afternoon, we were headed back to drop him off at work and were only about a block from the restaurant when my daughter said she had to go. The area we had just headed into was a large business park are with lots of very large buildings to the left and right. I saw one in the parking lot looked empty. I pulled over to the side of the building and parked at a curb. I had two car seats taking up my back seat and my husband in the passenger seat, so I took my daughter out of the car and set her up in the trunk to use the potty. I had just got her settled and she was looking uncomfortable and covering her face and looking down. I look behind me, and I see a woman walking up to me. It was summer at the time and very warm. She was wearing a jean skirt and tank top and had a crossbody purse. She looked at my daughter and said, Don't be embarrassed, we all go through it, and laughed. She said she needed a ride to the freeway and asked if I could take her. I told her that I was sorry, but I couldn't. She started to seem bothered and asked why I couldn't take her. I said my back seat is full, so I didn't have room for her. She snapped back. So you're telling me you put your daughter in the front seat? I told her no, that my husband was in the front seat. As soon as she heard that I wasn't alone and had my husband with me, she started to slowly backing away and walking down the street she came from. As she was walking away, she said, Oh, I'm sorry, I used to be from here but not anymore, and quickly walked off. If she would have made a left on the cross street she was walking towards, when going towards my car there was restaurants and gas stations a block up, plenty of people to ask for a ride. I still am so grateful my husband was with me that day. I don't know what her true intentions were, but getting to a populated area didn't seem to me one of them. Camping Story To set the stage for this story, we must go back to the far-off year of 1988. The location is the Cascade Mountains of Oregon. I was 10 years old, and with me was my mom, dad, best friend, and our golden retriever, Amber. We were very much an outdoor family and had many camping trips before this and since. But to this day, when I think about it, I still remember the terror I felt that weekend so long ago. After a brief talk with my father recently, it kind of came back to the front of my mind. He also was able to fill in a few details that I had forgotten. This holiday was like many others. We packed up the station wagon with everything we would need for a hike into one of our favorite lakes to camp at. To make this trip even more exciting for me was the fact it was my birthday weekend and I got to pick this lake. After we arrived at the trailhead and got our packs on, my dad got his sidearm out and strapped it on his belt. In Oregon, open carry was permitted in national forests, and my dad always had a gun on his hip while in the woods, which always added a sense of security. We had a close call with a bear one time in which it came in handy. The lake was about a four mile moderate hike in through some thick forest, but the trail itself was well maintained and was never very busy, so it was going to be a very pleasant hike in. We started off on our hike and back in the 80s, it was not uncommon to have your dog off leash on the trails in the forest, so we let Amber run and do her thing. She was a good dog and never ran off for too long or jumped on people. She did love people though, and speaking of people, we had not seen anyone else on the trail after about two miles in on the hike, which was nice since it was just all of us talking, laughing, and enjoying nature. My best friend and I started to hike ahead of everyone else because we were so energized and excited about finding the first and best tent spot once we got to the lake. 
Amber was bounding ahead of us and having a great time too. We were about 20 yards ahead of my parents when Amber stopped dead in her tracks. I thought she maybe saw a chipmunk or something, maybe a bird. But her hackles came up and she let out the lowest of growls. She never growled so we stopped walking and I thought maybe a bear or deer or something was just off the trail and she saw or heard it. We immediately started walking backwards and my parents caught up to us. My dad asked us what was going on. I told him that Amber is up the trail and is growling at something. He tells us girls to stay back with my mom and he walks ahead to where Amber was at on the trail. My dad gets up to her and looks around. I hear Amber whimper a bit while looking off the trail. My dad comforts her and calls her back and walks back to us. He says it must have been an animal and he did not see anything right off the trail or ahead of us. He says to let him take the lead and we continue to hike. It did not take long before it was forgotten and Amber and the rest of us are all having a good time again. We arrived at the lake and much to my delight, there was no one else there camping. The water was clean and blue and the shade from the trees made the whole scene just perfect. My friend and I found the best spot to set up our tent and my parents followed suit. After we had camp set up, my folks went off to fish just down the hill. And my friend and I took off with Amber to walk around to the other side of the lake to catch salamanders. We only made it about a mile when Amber stopped and started to growl. We stopped and looked around and heard brush rustling. Then right in front of us, a man walked out of the trees. Amber stayed right by our sides and started to bare her teeth. He was taller than my dad, so at least 6'4", was very skinny, but had very broad shoulders. He was clean cut and was wearing black jeans and a white polo shirt with loafers. I mean, he did not look like he had hiked at all or was even dressed for the outdoors. He almost looked like he came out of church. We just stood there trying to process this situation when Amber began to bark. The guy just stood there not moving and he smiled, like the creepiest smile. It felt like someone who thought that was what a smile was supposed to look like. Amber kept barking and this got my parents' attention and they look up to us and called out to us to come back. We complied and started to walk back towards them. My dad met us halfway and told us to go back to the campsite and he was going to talk to this guy. We got back to our camp and my mom sat with us. I could hear my dad asking the guy if he needed help or was he a fellow camper who had just set up a camp away from the lake. My dad was being polite and calm but I could see he was on guard and trying to feel out the situation. Now is the time to mention that my dad was ex-army and can be very intimidating when needed. The conversation continues. The guy told my dad he was just on a walk and I did not mean to intrude on us. The guy says goodbye and walks back into the woods. My dad walked back to camp, sat down and told us that he thinks the guy may just be a yuppie camper and does not know much about the outdoors. But my dad said that he got a weird vibe off him and would be keeping an eye out for him. Amber stayed by our side and was calm, yet she kept looking towards the direction the guy went. A bit more time goes by and we have a nice campfire going and the sun was starting to set. We cooked some dinner and made s'mores afterwards. My friend and I decided to go to our tent and read some books and tell each other some scary stories. Amber followed us to the tent and laid right outside of the door. My parents walked down to the lake to sit, have a beer, and just chill. They were never more than 50 yards away. Not long after my parents walked away, I hear Amber start to growl. Then we hear footsteps coming from the woods behind our tent. My friend and I turn off our flashlight and go quiet to listen. The footsteps stopped at the edge of the woods, 
We then hear a heavy breathing and a grunting sound. Amber starts to bark, and we then hear the footsteps retreat to the woods. Amber whimpers a bit, and I then hear my parents walking back to the camp. I go out and tell them what happened. My dad said that he heard Amber barking, and that is why they came back up. I ask my dad what we should do, what is going on, and if that strange guy was the one creeping around. He tells me that we will see about moving camp in the morning, since we still have three days left on the trip, and nothing has happened to warrant just leaving, but he said that we will play it by ear and just be a little more vigilant, and if something changes, we will decide what to do next. He tells us to try to get some sleep, and we all turn in for the night. The next morning we get up and have breakfast. After breakfast, we head down to the lake to fish. It was a beautiful day and we were having so much fun. The events from the prior day were almost forgotten. We decided around lunchtime that we would go for a short hike to the waterfall that is up from the lake. We were gone for only about an hour, and when we came back we found our tents opened and our sleeping bags drug out on the ground. My dad tells us to hang back with mom and he goes to investigate. He comes back and says nothing is missing, but it was not an animal that did this. He says we should break camp, hike back to the car and find another spot to camp for the next couple of days. I could tell my dad was not wanting to frighten us, but I heard the urgency in his voice. I was very disappointed. But if it meant we could enjoy the rest of the trip and not worry about some creep messing with us, then it was worth it. We broke camp and started our hike back. Dad was in the lead and we were double timing it and made it back to car in record time. As we walk over to the car we see that one of our tires was flat. Not a big deal, we always had a spare but when my dad bent down to start taking the lugs off, we swore it. It was not just flat. Someone slashed the tire. Dad changed that tire in record time and we threw everything into the car and he goes to turn the car on. But it would not start. Dad swears, gets out of the car and pops the hood. He says, damn it. It turns out someone took our spark plug wires. Old cars like that Chevy wagon did not have internal hood releases. You could just pop the hood from the outside. Dad slams the hood, says some very colorful words, and kicks some rocks. We were stuck, and no one else was at the trailhead. We were stranded. My parents are calm under pressure, and after a few minutes of discussion, it was decided that Dad would start walking down the road until he could hitch a ride to town and go to the auto parts store. Mom and the rest of us were going to wait with the car and look for someone to hopefully pull into the trailhead and help us. A few of hours go by and no one has come to the trailhead. It is getting hot and we are hungry and tired. My mom makes us some lunch and we go to sit under a tree to cool off. Amber is by our side and was calm, but... Then we hear a voice. Amber leaps up and starts to whimper. The creepy guy from yesterday comes down the trail and is asking my mom if we need help. My mom tells him we are fine, that it is being settled, and my dad will be back soon. This creep then tells her that his camp is close, and he is parked on the old fire road that is near the lake and asks us if we would like to come back to his camp and wait until my dad returns. Mom sternly tells him no that we will just wait here and thank you anyway. He does not like this. He tells my mom that is not safe out here for a pretty lady and two young girls. My mom, like my dad, is no pushover and asserts herself again that we do not need any help and to please just leave us alone. The guy just stands there, smiles wide, and then just turns around and leaves. My mom is visibly shaken, and us girls were just a bit scared. 
My mom comes over to us and tells us that we need to stay close, do not wander and that we will be okay. My friend and I are really kind of freaked out and are just hoping my dad will make it back soon. After about another 30 minutes, the creepy guy comes back. This time, though, he is not alone and has a slightly younger guy with him. The other guy is dressed as a yuppie camper and had a very stern look on his face. My mother stands her ground as they approach. Amber starts to low growl and her hackles go up. The two guys flank us and one of them flashes a gun tucked into his belt. The older guy tells us that we need to go with them and that they were not asking. My mom backs up next to us and without taking her eyes off them, reaches to her belt and pulls out her bowie knife. My mom said we will not be going and that they need to leave now. The two men did not even flinch at this and said that we will come with them or they will hurt us. At this moment though, Amber goes from just growling to barking and puts herself between us and them. This makes the guys stop. My mom yells that they need to leave now. They start backing up and at that moment we hear a truck pulling into the trailhead parking lot. At the sight of the truck, the guys start to walk away fast and disappear into the tree line. The truck was a forest ranger and he had my dad with him. My dad jumped out of the truck and ran over to us, asking if we were okay. The ranger came over and asked who those men were and if we were okay. My mom explained everything while my dad hugged us girls and told us we will be okay. The ranger takes off to go looking for the men. My dad tells us that he was about five miles from the town when the ranger picked him up and took him the rest of the way to get the part for the car. He then drove him back to our car. After hearing what happened, my dad was pissed and wanted to find the guys who tried to kidnap us, and that had been terrorizing us for the past 24 hours. The ranger came back and told us that he had almost caught up to them, but they sped away in their truck with a camper in tow. They had been parked behind a small ridge behind the lake on an old logging road. He did not get a plate, but he radioed a description of the men in their truck and camper to the local sheriff's office. He also took our information and said he would pass it on to them. He waited with us until dad had the car fixed and we were able to leave. We decided to not continue camping and instead drive a couple of hours to spend the last two days of the trip at the beach and stay in a hotel. A few days later, a deputy called my dad and told him they never did find the men. He said that it was most likely a crime of opportunity after seeing a woman with two girls in tow. He was sure they had been watching us from off the trail and had messed with our camp to judge how my dad would react. When my dad seemed to be too big of a threat, they sabotaged our car hoping to put us in a position where we were vulnerable. He said they would follow up with us if they find out anything else, but according to my dad, nothing ever came of it. Years later, I tried to do some research on crimes in that area of Oregon during the 80s that might have involved something like we experienced. All I could find was a few reports of campers being robbed and a few cars broken into. There was one case of a young lady and her dog going missing from an area near there, but it was never determined what had happened to her, or even if it was something bad or she just ran away. I can tell you that we did go back to that lake a few years later and had a very uneventful camping trip. It was nice to go back and find some joy in a spot that was special to me. I really hope those creepy guys never hurt anyone, and maybe were caught for other crimes. I will never know though. I just hope to never run into a situation like that again. I can say that having a dog along with us helped our situation. She was the hero and kept us alert. Amber went on to live until she was 12 years old and passed with her favorite people around her.
Remember to stay safe, stay watchful, and it never hurts to have a sweet, brave dog with you. This happened to me when I was a teenager some years ago, but I still think about it sometimes. So me and my four friends were on this one-hour bus ride to go to my parents' house to hang out. We were sitting and chatting in the back of the bus. The bus is empty except for us, and this middle-aged man sitting a couple of seats away from us. He looked like a normal businessman on his way to work or something, wearing a suit and carrying a briefcase. After a while, we noticed he was behaving kind in a weird way. He was chugging down beers rapidly, which is not that common on this bus. And also, it was in the middle of the day. He was also pretty openly flipping through a porno magazine and kind of muttering to himself. Okay, weird, but we didn't really get too bothered. After a while, he starts approaching us, sitting closer and small talking with us a bit asking how old we are, where we're headed, and so on. We kind of just reply politely, but try to end the conversation pretty quickly since he's creeping us out. Apart from the beer drinking and porn magazine, you can really sense something is wrong with this guy. He's grinding his teeth a lot, and has this blank stare like he's looking right through you, not really there. When we stop talking to him after a while, he just sits there silently and stares at us for a while, breathing heavily like he's getting more and more agitated. And after a minute or so, he suddenly leans forward and pulls down the sleeve of his shirt. On his arm, he has these big pair of sharp-looking scissors, duct taped to his arm with the sharp end pointing up towards his hand. He's stretching out his arm and making sure we all see the scissors and says, Does this make you respect me? Am I getting your respect now? We just sit there with our mouths open. I'm scared as hell, not really sure what to say or do and panicking because I'm not sure what this guy is capable of. After a moment, he leans back again and continues staring at us, not saying anything more. And we don't say anything either. Afraid set him off, I guess. We get off in the next station, all jittery and full of adrenaline after that weird encounter. If I wasn't a clueless teenager, I would have called the police at that point. But we didn't, and I still think about it sometimes and wonder what a guy like that, who is obviously unhinged, is capable of. And if he ever did something worse, than just scare some teenagers by acting crazy.